have a very, very special guest uh, who has been on with us before. Um, many of you are here uh, to listen uh, and to learn and to love. Uh, many of you may know uh, who our special guest is and follow her on her YouTube channel. Um, many of you maybe are new and uh, are here for the first time listening to Alana's story, uh, but we'll just give you a quick uh, rundown of what we have here so far. It's a little bit of an older um, introduction, but uh, I think it still sticks. Uh, Alana Danan is a celibate druid and artist based in Ireland. She was born into a practicing shamanic family. As an infant, she was abducted by benevolent beings who worked on upgrading and activating her DNA. At the age of nine, she was again abducted, but, but this time by malevolent small uh, gray beings. At this time, a surgical implant was placed in her brain. The implant was used to, as a tracking device. It was at this time that she was rescued by Nordic type aliens. The implant could not be removed as it was surgically implanted in her brain. However, her benevolent surgical team modified the implant and attuned it so it would not do any harm to her. Elena had no clear conscious rem remembrance of this, but in 2018, something happened in her life which started her awakening process. And by November 2019, she was ready to find the truth. She decided to do some hypnosis to get her missing memory back and asked the universe to help manifest the perfect person for her. We have um, Elena's website, her YouTube, and a link for, uh, for her book going into the chat right there. Um, Elena welcome to our cc canada uh interview night really happy to have you thank you very much um i um i apologize first for the delay because when it is always when you don't need it that the, the computer needs an update <laughs> i'm here that's the the important <laughs> Not, yeah, not a problem. Uh, I, I empathize with computer issues. It was just a couple of weeks ago, I tried to do a national meeting and I think I was like a half hour, 45 minutes late because my computer decided not to do anything. And I was literally, literally just sitting here waiting, watching it load, it. watching it load. And, uh, but That's thankfully we, we get, yeah, thankfully we got started and thankfully that you're here tonight. I'm very, very grateful that you've taken the time and energy uh, to share with us. We last were sharing back in November and everyone, uh, if you hadn't had a chance, uh, you can check out that, that interview that we did uh, on our YouTube channel uh, with Elena, but it's been five, six months uh, since we chatted last. How are you? What you've been up to? You've been very, very busy. Yes, I um I've been very busy um doing a lot of interview and videos to help people and pass on the messages I I um I receive from my um protectors and friends upstairs I call it. Um uh, I've been working a lot, a lot, a lot. Um and uh, writing, writing, writing. I'm writing uh, another book. Uh, everything that happened after the first one and uh, all the rest. So um, very busy and um, well, um, um, something happened with um, Stephen. Um, so um, we're going to talk about it as well to uh, something very important, very quite uh, important. Yeah, yeah, so that's it. No, indeed, indeed. And uh, we can, maybe give some people a little bit of a history here at, 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 that, at this point. Um, so during our chat with, uh, with Elena in November, Elena, you got to meet one of our CC Canada members, Stephen, um, in that chat. Uh, you guys really connected. That is, again, on our YouTube channel. Everyone can, can go and check that out. Um, and uh, Stephen reached out for, to you because he was looking for some help and, and support. Maybe we can just kind of start there and, and kind of the cultivation of that relationship. Yes, I, I remove my glasses because you can't see my eyes. Um, <laughs> I, I see you blurry, but if I put them, it's like too, 
<laughs> it's okay. Um, yeah, so when we had this, uh, this chat, uh, the first time here, that's quite a big, uh, bit um, Im impressive and intimidating because it brings me back at that moment. Um, I was interviewed with and interviewed with Elisa, uh, the lady who performed hypnosis for me to get my memory back from my alien abduction. So we were talking about that, aliens and stuff. And see, Stephen Chow was uh, there as a member. And uh, I started to say, oh, yeah, I know these beings. I've been working on Area 51. And I went, what? And we connected. And that was it. That connection was made. And um, I also, there were, there were two things about Stephen. First, this um, alien uh, connection. We had a lot of knowledge in common. And uh, also, what his energy, he seemed in a real suffering. He seemed, not, and it's like, I went, that, that he needs help. He needs help, and I, I know these beings, and I, maybe I can, I, maybe I can help him. And I asked uh, Shelley um, her, his email, and if he was okay first to correspond with me, and he said yes, we exchanged emails. And um, it went back and forth. Um, and he hadn't read my book yet. And uh, we, all the names of the races, uh, alien races and everything, all the details, it was really matching. And uh, so it was becoming very, very interesting. We were, he was describing to me what he saw there. And uh, I had some details that were missing and he had a piece of the puzzle. So we were talking about that. And uh, but then when that went, we stopped talking funnily, we stopped talking about uh, aliens quite rapidly. And we started talking about spiritual things and healing very quickly. I sent him tuning forks and we, we I tried to help him because um, I know these these beings and they are real. Um, I'm going to stay polite. Um, Suddenly, two, during two months, I didn't hear about him. And I went, okay, I hope he's well. And, um, and then he, after two months, he sent me a message. That was different tone and just three lines. It was basically, hi, Lena, I'm, I'm ready to speak. Uh, would you would you schedule a video with me and let you organize YouTube? And I went, what? What happened? And uh, we had stopped talking about it. And suddenly, after two months, he was he wanted to to speak publicly. And I went, okay, I went, well, sure, because that's dangerous. You risk your you put your life at risk. And he was never replying to me when I was saying, are you sure? I was ignoring. Um, and uh, he insisted. I went, uh, okay, so let's schedule an interview, uh, a recording. Um, we recorded this interview, two hours. All what possibly, all one possibly, that could possibly go bad, <laughs> went bad. I mean, I dropped a glass of water on my, on my laptop. Um, uh, we were both attacked the day before by the same beings physically. Um, and, but we did this interview, we protected ourselves and uh, it, it was all right. At the end of the two hours, uh, you could really feel that a burden had been lifted off his shoulders. He could live in peace. He had delivered the baby. Uh, this knowledge that he, he kept all, the, all his, these years since 1980s, um, finally, he was releasing it into the world. Uh, Stephen knew I was protected. He didn't fear for me. And I think he was ready to go because his health was going really bad. And I felt the moment right. 
but I didn't know how bad it was. It didn't really tell me. So we recorded that and I said, okay, I schedule it next week, uh, my channel, and uh, you have the time to think about it and withdraw in the mean meantime. No, no answer. And I said, okay, I'll edit it in the same time and hide your face. And, and uh, that was a, and a that we recorded a, a, a Friday and a Tuesday um, in the middle of the night, send me an email. Uh, air this video right now because I'm coughing blood and having blackout. What? I went, no, Stephen, I'm not going to do that. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, and he said, will you please do this? And I understood that it was his decision, his will, and that he really wanted and I respected it. Because I thought at that moment, if he dies now and I don't air the video, maybe that would be a big regret. Well, I could do it after, but he wanted to see it published. So well, it was a fear. I didn't think it would die I couldn't believe that it was very bad physically but it was just saying I'm having blackout and coughing blood that was very scary to hear what to read so I had a video are you sure are you sure nothing okay and um, in the middle of the night and on the, um, the following day he said to me thank you so much I read the comments it's fantastic great audience blah 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 thank you so much and that was the last time um, Wednesday and um, on the Monday I received an email from Rebecca his partner and she said uh, using oh, I'm, I'm Becky I'm using Stephen's email to say that he passed on the Saturday and I was devastated devastated um, and I, I, I really 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 <laughs> really was a wreck because I was really feeling guilty about that to have let him do that um, then um, um, Simon Parks wanted to, to talk to me and Shelley said that to me and I went oh, no he's going to to uh, to be angry at me I was thinking he's going to tell me you shouldn't have done that blah 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 so I didn't want to talk to him first place and then Shelley said no no he really wants to, to help you and he doesn't want to, 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 to ground you. <laughs> so I said, okay, I chance it. And uh, Simon was so amazing. I spoke with him on the phone and uh, in five minutes, five, ten minutes, he really released the, the burden out of my shoulder, of my life, of my energy field, of my body, of everything by saying just a few words. Um... He said, you know, he said, Stephen has had asked me to to help him release the information and I wasn't really sure and I told him you you are sure because you're gonna you may lose your life, you won't be protected if you do that. And Stephen was insisting and then um, he Simon said I didn't have any news from him ever afterwards and then he picked you. He said, but you would have said no, he would have picked someone else. So in fact, the fact that he said that, I understood that Stephen has, had already planned and was determined to get that out. And it wasn't my fault at all. He's just used me to pass the information. But what Simon said, he said, but also he said, feel privileged that he picked you to liberate him from his burden and that's a gift and that's an honor i'm shaking now <laughs> uh, and so um yeah and uh i saw stephen twice since spirit form um said once that he would protect me and um he 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 brought michael salah in my life because one day um in fact a few days after, uh, he appe Stephen appeared in, in front of me, and uh, as a spirit form, and um, he said, "I would, I would, pr I will protect you," and I was in tears, in tears. And in the 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 half an hour, 
Michael Salah sent me um, an email and he said, oh, I've seen uh, Stephen's interview. I would like to talk about it. And thanks to Michael Salah, this interview has now touched the world. And uh, Stephen's legacy is to humanity. And uh, I'm very proud of him. And um, that's been hard. It's been hard. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, my, that's the story with Stephen. No, absolutely. Um, thank you so much, Elena, for that. Um, Stephen obviously held a special place in in our hearts in CC yeah. Canada, it is, it's especially amongst the the coordinator team. Um, there was a just a couple of us uh, that came on just about a year ago, and Stephen was one of the, if not the first people, um, one of the first, yeah, one of the first people to, to come forward and say, I need help. I need, I, I, can you, can you help me in some way? I need support. And at that time, you know, CC Canada was definitely not where it is today. Um, we definitely didn't have the support systems that we do, that we have now. Um, but uh, this was, this was put on uh, uh, a new teamed plate and, um we did a, we did a, hopefully we did our best uh, to help Stephen. Um, I remember sitting on the phone with Stephen for for numerous hours just listening and hearing about his story um, and not then he wasn't asking to come on a podcast or anything to tell a story. He was just listening for, he was wanting someone just to reach out to, to, to speak with. And uh, it was then uh, we were able to get uh, that conversation with Simon and Steven together um, where you just expressed some of those words there. Um, and, you know, Steven participated as much as he could on in our Zoom gathering. So some members maybe here that are with us tonight um, remember Stephen. Um, and I know uh, towards uh, the earlier part, part of uh, 2021, Stephen was really a part of our meditation group on Sundays. And uh, during the time that you were speaking with him and and scheduling the, the, the podcast, I was speaking with Stephen about coming on to, to run some meditations. And uh, I know he was writing a book uh, and... <laughs> like you it hit us like a ton of bricks like i remember seeing some of the posts and i was like just no way this no way no no way that this that this has happened like this is can happen and uh i and and i called his his phone number and uh and i and i spoke with uh with rebecca his his girlfriend and and confirmed that he did just pass and man it was it was a somber moment uh, to say the least. And I know we've had a, a quick conversation um, just a few days ago and we were connecting and, and sharing some stories as well. Um, but I think, uh, like you said, we are honoring uh, Stephen and his legacy, getting his story out there. And we're going to be honoring him uh, later tonight um, as well. So uh, thank you, Elena, for your service and for helping Stephen heal and be liberated. Uh, that is what we all really want. We all want to heal uh, and we all want to walk in the state of not being afraid, not being afraid of what's going to happen to speak mm -hmm. our truth to be authentic, and that is super, super difficult when you know you have some shadows behind you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It, it takes courage, really, And but it's the cause, you know, the cause is the disclosure, and uh, it's a duty. It does, the, there's no question that that's a duty and the, for humanity to, to speak. I, we are the disclosure. That's all. Always, I, what I say. We are the disclosure. We do. We must not now not uh, wait for the governments to tell us because they will never tell us the truth <laughs> anyway. So it's the the contactees and the experiencers who who know the truth. And everybody has a little bit of the piece of the puzzle, and we need to uh, put all of this together and speak speak and if every the more people we speak the less they will silence people because um when 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 you you start to speak and and if some some suddenly you are silenced 
that puts more weight to your 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 story so it's even you know uh so we we need to 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 speak and tell our stories that's very important very important uh absolutely um and if anyone has any questions uh for elena please again you can use the reactions button just to raise your hand and we'll put you into the queue um if you are curious about um any of the uh the origin stories uh elena has uh done a wonderful job uh laying it all out in her book um the alien race is there you can see it in the in the background uh <laughs> But and and Catherine's <laughs> holding it up as well. Uh, so it's definitely making the rounds. Uh, Elena, can you tell us a little bit about your upcoming book? What are you writing on and how how are you expanding it uh, from your uh, your first book? Um, the it, it's the follow up of this, the first one, um, because the first one I wrote it in four months with the drawings included. Uh, so it was like a super rush. And uh, I realized, realized afterwards that, um, oh, I should have put this and that. Uh, but Thoran didn't think it was necessary at the time. Um, it's just more graphics and, uh, you know, explaining stuff. And uh, But it is not what this book is really about. Uh, this book is about what happened to me after uh, the, after I wrote the first one, all my travels, my contacts, uh, what what is going on with the war, um, and my encounters, also the very important encounters. I encounter Val Thor uh, three times, um, and it was quite life changing, especially the first first time, and uh, things like that. It's uh, it, it's. It's a narrative of everything that happened, and it's more. But it's always based. It's based on the the war and the Galactic Federation and the liberation of Earth. Um, love it. So. I love it, and we can, I'm sure, talk uh, for a long time about that. But we do have a couple hands raised, so we want. We definitely want to get to questions um, as much as we can because there is a lot of content to cover for sure. Um, first up, we have Leanne. Welcome, Leanne. Hi, thank you. Hello. Hi. Um, I do also have your book now. No. <laughs> thank you. I follow you many places because I do want to support you and I do believe the importance of it. Um, I wanted to ask, now, I appear to be battling um, at night. I have even had my husband say he saw me. Um, and he described what I was wearing and he said I was the leader of whatever we were doing to protect, protect, I don't know who. And then for some reason, I'm, does Thorhan ever connect with people? No. Okay. No, there so, is a lot, there are a lot of people who think they connect to him and he hates that because he, he says I'm not... A historical person i'm not uh, uh to be worshipped or i'm just a soldier and he says and that because there's a lot of people say oh i i connect with him or blah blah, blah. It, it doesn't it doesn't so uh you know it's all also a name that is is not the only one to 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 wear so it may be someone else name like him you know um so um, i don't remember he doesn't know him. I just thought not, his yeah. name. I've had his name come to me a couple times, so I don't okay, know yeah. what that means. If you if you meet other ETs who know him, for sure you'll hear about him. <laughs> sorry, I guess she wants she wants to be part of the story. Okay, sorry. Oh, oh. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah. yeah so no, I haven't seen him or connected that way, but I've had his name come in a couple times. So. Okay. Oh yeah. So you probably were with people with people who um, know him, and if it was in a, a military uh, situation, he commands a fleet, and he also um, is a mission coordinator. At the take turn, uh, so he coordinates missions. So that would be logical that you would have heard about him. His name. Okay. And some yeah. days you wake up and you just feel like you've been hit by a train or. 
like there is this big battle yeah. going on i totally I, I feel it of course yeah um but yes so thanks for sharing keep sharing no problem you know there is a lot of people or envoys who have a second life at night and uh <sighs> Yeah, you know? well, I sort of feel like it sometimes, that's for sure. Okay. Uh, yeah, you may be one of these. <laughs> thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank thank you, you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate welcome. it. And thank you, uh, Elena, for that. Um, next up, we have Abigail. Welcome, Abigail. Bonjour, uh, Elena. <laughs> ah, <laughs> bonjour. Uh, I had a question uh, regarding a couple of videos in which uh, Tohan was uh, giving you a a vision of our future on Terra, which would be uh, in about a hundred years from now, perhaps earlier, he said, in which uh, Terrans would be federated, which is good news. <laughs> uh, I was wondering, because he was also saying that we would, uh, as individuals, we would keep our sovereignty yeah. and as cultures, we would keep also our unique um, ways and, and I don't know what's the word, but customs and things like that. So I was wondering how we would actually um, deal with the challenge of communication in terms of languages. Uh, would we be going um, with telepathy? Would we adopt some Terran common language or eventually you know, a galactic language? I don't know if you have any uh, visions. I don't know about the yeah. I don't know about the language. That's something we haven't never. I never asked about that. Um, Telepathy, why not? But you know, it's it's funny because all human ETs that I know, they they communicate by telepathy, but also by voice. Because uh, yeah, they keep they keep the both. So maybe we will keep the both too, I suppose. Yeah. And the language, I don't know. Hmm, interesting. Ah, question <laughs> that I may ask. Yeah. <laughs> maybe yeah, on Tuesday with Koran. <laughs> Yes. 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 All right. Thank you, Abigail, and uh, thank you, Elena, for that. Um, next up, we have Catherine. Welcome, Catherine. Welcome, Elena. So glad that you're here tonight with us, ah, Catherine. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually have a, a question. Um, I guess it's a question and a statement. First of all. When Stephen first came to our Zooms, he made my protection candle explode. So I knew that there was oh, yeah. things with him yeah. and uh, there was a lot that, of work that he needed assistance with. And we, we recognized that uh, after he, he met with you, we saw him, he looked a lot better. He just, we, we noticed an improvement in his uh, physical appearance and even how he interacted with us. So there was definitely a, a very positive release and some healing for him. So first I wanted wow. to, to share that with you to let you know. Um, also for a, to me. Yeah. Um, for a personal thing, um, just to see you as a druid to come forward to speak about the extraterrestrials um, has been very encouraging because I know that a lot in the earth-based communities it's easy to talk about fairies and demonic beings, but as soon as you mention extraterrestrials, you are shoved out of those communities. So uh, what I was wondering about in your opinion is, do you think those that are drawn into shamanism, druidry, Wicca, for the good part of it, do you think that we are being called by those old energies or old belief systems to assist with the dark battles against the dark magicians that are out there. You no, know, we don't. You don't really hear too much about the dark battles or the dark magicians going on, or, or how they're interacting with us and what they're doing. And I was just—I've always wondered, just knowing what I've heard of your background, if, if that—if you feel that there is this involvement that people are being humans are being called to this. Oh yes. So what makes sense? <laughs> oh yes and um that that is why i took distance also with the pagan community uh, while well in ireland anyway um there is um a magical war magic not magical a magic magic war uh, uh, at the moment and it's very very bad against very demonic dark force as well but that 
these dark forces are of two natures. Uh, they are part of the Earth orb, but also um, they are extraterrestrial uh, reptilian beings. Um, so uh, these forces are, yes, and so they've infiltrated a lot of pagan uh, movements, um, especially, well, mainly it's Wicca. Uh, Wicca and, uh, of course, satanic uh, things, but uh, that makes, that goes with it. Uh, and uh, they are trying to subdue all the, 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 the and infiltrating everywhere in the pagan movements to subdue the light workers to, to the dark, um, creating uh, wars and separation and between them. Uh, it's quite horrible. Uh, there is, yes, there is this, this um, magic battle going on and uh, I, I've, I've been cursed so many times and uh, uh, no, well, well tr ex uh, attempt to curse me. Once it worked because I gave a key to the person. I gave my name, uh, so my my secret name. So I was very stupid. Um, but um, yeah, um, so that that's terrible because every time I uh, either publish an article about druidry or do a video or about druidry or something that I do about druidry, I receive an attack and I know it bounces off my, my protection. And I'm oops, oh, oh, <laughs> thanks for thinking about me. I mean, it's terrible, it's terrible. And uh, they, they're really like, that's, that's terrible. Um, it's a lot infiltrated. And there is, yes, there is a, a this battle going on, this war going on at a um, magic level, and it's really pathetic. And I just pulled out of it. It's you know, it's it became like who's gonna have the bigger stuff, the most beautiful cloak, or uh, you know, the best tattoo, or it, it's so ridiculous. And I just left. You know, I do. I stick to the truth, my truth. Um, I start to speak about um, aliens and, and stuff like that because that's my life. That's that's who I am. Um, I think that didn't. I didn't need to really um, um, leave this community uh, with great effort. They have kicked me out because they they were really nasty, really nasty. You're sick. You're crazy. You need help. Blah blah blah. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Bye. That's it. Good luck. That that's my experience with pagan. I still I, I will be a druid and a sermon for life, but uh, I do my stuff. That's it. Don't need anyone. No. Thank you. So. Uh, yep, Catherine's throwing your heart there. There you go. Thank you very much, Catherine, <laughs> and thank you, uh, Elena, for that uh, wonderful answer. Um, before Cindy, uh, we do have uh, Mean that uh, wanted to jump in here. Uh, mean, you have the floor. Hi. Um, hi, Elena. How are you? Hey, good. Um, you're so bright. I can keep looking at you. <laughs> uh, um, I have a, um, I had very much strong desire to connect to from where I come from, my original, okay, very strong desire. And it comes in the dreams to let me know. And dreams are so, so real. And I kept future events in my dreams. And also that um, I walk through the walls like that in, in there. I don't have any problem with that. And Japanese, uh, stuff comes a lot, a lot to me. Uh, Kwanin is the one goddess that I connect to a lot, a lot, I would say that. She comes, keeps on coming. I mean, I would be going in a road and I would be stranded and I would be directed towards the temple. And I was like, oh, you know. And then now the, the desire to do and to be that help to people, but also there is an army kind of a, a thing with me, with me. I'm leading the, the groups and it's in that I am fighting that. And um, I also get this, like Leanne says that the next day I get feeling tired a lot. Mm -hmm. So now here desire to do manifest in this 3D 
or 4D or 5D, um, it's not coming out to be like that because the anywhere I come near to manifesting that, I back out because it is not the way I would like to work my energy. So it's always there are blockages because it's not the 3D thing that I feel connected to. It is like something that mm -hmm. can be not, I, I just don't feel like, I don't know what to make out of all this because for whatever reason, all my attachments has gone, everything is gone. I'm living a simple life. There are no people around me, even though I'm mother of two children, they're not around me. Like for life just happened that I just, I'm left alone in like that. So I feel that what is that is not letting me get into, even though I believe in the divine timing and when it happens, it happens. Uh, but that curiosity is like on everyday basis, like my, all my, um, uh, uh, what do you say? My soul family, my, they all come in my dreams, all the older people, they all come in and I am giving, they are giving me the messages so that I can give it to people around me. So that, so yesterday my grandmother came and she said, oh, I'm living in a place where they have, they removed, I don't have to pay for the phone. I'm my, my phone lines are free. I knew it right away as if her channels are all open. So on my mess, I got the message I have to tell each family members so that I can tell them now you can connect. She has gone free somehow. And now you can connect that to, uh, and um, losing my child also was one of the reasons mm -hmm. that got me into um, uh, being spiritual or connecting to my inner self, that what was the reason behind it. And then everything taken away from me. My other children were taken, everything, money, leave it. Like I'm in the brink of something, but I did not let, because I kept myself first in the front. I always, whenever some distractions would come, I would just put them away. But what I want to know from you, because you, if you feel that I can see on your face that you're already connected somehow, somewhere within me, I, I can feel that. Because I can, I can feel it right down, down there, that, that, that connection to know that, and I don't know what to do, but do you, can you help me just give me just a little bit of peek through what you um, can uh, get out of what I told you? Uh, what what do you, you want, uh, what, what would be your, your question then? My question would be that, what did you get out of this? this? What is it that is there that is there? If there are any forces out there trying to get my attention, because I saw oh. one of the, um, uh, spaceships, uh, I saw at the uh, bar end and I asked, I said, what is that that I saw? Because it was moving and it was light shining and then it was turning the other side. It was again light shining. And then I asked, I said, I'm right here. I'm asking, what was that? And then the dogs barked. So many of the dogs, mm. they barked around me. And I, and that happened twice. That happened twice. Okay, and you, so what was the sh the shape of the the sheep? Um, it it was not completely oval, and not even pointed. So it would move and it would shine, and then suddenly it would move and it would go away, like it won't shine. It was a shine, shine, shine mm. was also like not the white, but not even platinum silver. You know, like there is that off mm -hmm. white kind of a shine. It, it was, and it, it stayed there. Flat. Yeah, it was, was it uh, like a, a flying saucer shape or triangle or? Uh, no, it was uh, a, a flying saucer thing. Yeah, half okay. moon, half moon kind, but not the ah. bulky kind, but a flatter, like flatter. very sleek, very sleek. Yeah. Okay, there was no bump under and. and not much. Above. Yeah, no, no, no. But it got okay. attractive because I, I'm sitting here, I see around the window, and I see there was a plane going. Uh, like, you know, leaving that uh, um, mm. cloud of that. So I went out to see that. That was my direction to go out. So I knew that it wanted me to go out to see mm. it. So that's when I saw that. And oh, I yeah. turned my hand and I saw a balloon flying. And then I saw this. So there were two things that mm. kept me captive there for me to stay mm. there, like wanted me to go there and see it. Then I needed confirmations. Mm. And then the dogs barked when I asked. What? what? Usually when we see a ship, there's um, 
a connection, of course, there is an interaction. So there is a connection between, between the occupants of the ship and yourself. Um, either that they abduct you regularly or either that you have a connection with them and um, what were your, your feelings? Were your feelings fascinated, no. hypnotized or? No, uh, no, no. I was aware. I was aware. I knew what I was doing and yeah. they were good because even though I okay. don't enter into that, I did ask them that mm. was it something connected to me that was there and right there then there were two, one person coming with a dog, another one coming and the third one started barking from the building. It just happened. Twice I yeah. uh, asked again. Second day again, I asked. I didn't see it. Second day I asked. I said, okay, please let me know if, um, if, if there was something there that was trying to get my attention. And then again, no one was there. I again saw the dog barking. So I don't know. What was it? And there are so Difficult. many dogs in the building too. That is another one of the things that I'm, I'm saying that. It is difficult to to say for me because I I flying saucer shape. It does a lot of different races. Uh, I can say it's not Pleiadian because uh, Pleiadian ship, scout ship, I've bumped under and above. Uh, it was benevolent, so uh, so it's not gray because the grays have this flying saucer ships a lot. No, no, yeah, um, benevolent just flying saucer flat um, can be the um, Epsilon Eridani or the, um, the Meton uh, from uh, Proxima Century. Um, I don't have them all in head, but it can be... Um, so can I... Can can you still tell know. me the spellings of it? I can just then research on my own. But I'm not sure. I I I I, sh I would need to look into my book and go one by one and see what okay. ship corresponds to it. Uh, I don't know if we have time to do that. In fact, so uh, no. if we there do, uh, I do it. That there are a lot of people. I want other people to give chances, <laughs> so I can email you something, and then you can email me. Okay. Uh, I I have. I receive hundreds of emails a day, so okay. I'm I'm afraid uh, uh, that won't be possible. <laughs> Try okay. to limit the, the so whatever you have. You just give me the names, just that I will just write it down. Yeah, so one um, of the, one of the, you, just, you just said. I just thought about, but I'm not sure it's that. Okay. Um, Meton from uh, Proxima Century, or uh, what did I say? Uh, can be uh, uh, Epsilon Eridani. Uh, can be, I don't know, that's the two that came in my mind, but um, uh, I'm not sure that would be this one. So it may be many, can be many other ones. We're well, not okay. great. Anyway, yeah, but, so, um, okay, so what was the, la the second one? A, B, S, A, Epsilon? Epsilon, Epsilon, Eridani. Eridani, okay, thank you. And thank yeah, you, okay. Leanne, for showing the, uh, from the book. Thank you. It's not that one. The one she showed just now, no. That has curves on the both sides, so it wasn't that. Thank you, Lian. Okay. Ma, welcome. Thank you so much. Thank Anna. you. I really appreciate You're that. Welcome. Thank you, Mean. I really appreciate that. And thank you, Elena, uh, for uh, that, that little glimmer of what it could be. I'm sure we'll be able to, I mean, we'll be able to find out who that was, uh, who's trying to contact her. Thank you. Um, okay, moving right along. Next up, we have Cindy. Thank you very much for, for your patience, Cindy. Hi, Elena. How are you? Hi. Good. Hi. My my guide, Anouk, wanted to say hi. I don't know if you know Anouk. Hi. Um, he's Palladian. Okay. Good. Wonderful. <laughs> I have a, a lot of um, different friends that come to visit me. And um, I'm able to see them at night as well, too. Um, and I do different things at, at night. Um, I channel messages from them as well, too. And um, I'm able to receive codes through life. Very good. Yeah. But mm. uh, I just felt guided to say hi. <laughs> <laughs> and they're telling me to say hi. So that's. <laughs> so hi. 
Say hi. And, and um, my friends are are like this color. I don't know if you can see this. Yeah. I had an experience. I've had experiences since I've been five. So. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Well, yeah, I say wow, but um, maybe, <laughs> yeah, if it's bad experience, it's not wow. Yeah. Well, I've um, had good, some good and some bad, but I have yeah. some ones, but yeah. Yeah, been there. Indeed. Uh, thank you very much, Cindy. I uh, appreciate nice that. Hello. Uh, and uh, thank you, Elena. Next up, we have Tammy. Hello, Tammy. Hello. Sorry, I didn't hear me. I, my internet's going wonky here. Um, just something uh, that really resonated with me. So about five years ago, um, I was on a fast track. I understand now why I was put on the fast track, but I went into a meditation and I actively am looking and seeking out darkness when I'm doing my meditations. And what was really weird to me is a very large white reptile came right up to my face here and then two flanked him. And that's when the really bad attack started um, happening I, I i've seen them once since then just recently um but i don't understand why they would come to me because it was just weird that i mean i understand that there's reptiles but they were white and very large and oh, yeah. i don't know if you know anything about that the white and very large <laughs> ones did, did it have wings the first one did. I didn't really see the two that flanked me because I was more focused on what was standing in front of me. But when the other two flanked me, it was almost like they were, they had like these sickish grins. And I mean, I, I work a lot in the dark. So I'm, I see a lot of very strange beings. Um, but these ones just stuck out. And so as you were talking, I don't know, it just kept plucking, plucking in. So I thought I'd have, I had to ask. Uh, yeah, with wings. So the, yes, you said the one in front of you had wings. Yeah, I could see the, the <laughs> points. Yeah. The points, yeah, points, yeah. Be, like points like this. Yeah. Behind yeah. the shoulder. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. my God, that's a Sikar. That's a Sikar Lord. Uh, they are, that, that's super nasty. Uh, they are white, it, you know. <laughs> it's, I think it's Gandalf, Gandalf who said everything that glitters is not gold or something like that. It's not because it's white; it's that it's good. Um, yeah, oh no, no I knew are, they weren't good. Oh my God, these ones are really super, super dangerous, super bad, the bad of the bad. Uh, Sikar, yeah from Tuban, um, Alpha Draconis, they are Sikar Lord, um, the white ones are the royals, and uh, they, they're really bad. Uh, you are, you said you are psychic and you can see spirits and stuff like that. Well, I do, I have a lot of different things that I do. Um, yeah. So I see faces, so I see faces that come to me in smoke, and then they either, they either dissipate. Um, I think those when those faces come to me, those are the the active um, beings that I'm actively trying to stop doing mm. what they're doing. You know, like I'm I'm out there breaking spells. I'm out there breaking chains. Like I'm I'm actively seeking those out. And so, and and I'm very protected. So please don't don't be worried for me. Um, when I got those, I guess royals that came to me. It, it wasn't in a fear based. It was more of, I we see you. That was the feeling I got. Mm. I see yeah, you. yeah, that's it. And, that's it. Um, which just sparked. And and now looking back, so the, those four or five years that I've been actively out doing this, and it, you know, I I do get attacked quite quite a bit. But again, I'm very protected, and so they're starting to attack the outer circle. So not so me because they can't get to me, but they're trying through through others that are trying yeah but it was just weird that there was that you know that connection and just recently now when I'm in meditating I'm actually seeing things in in sacred geometry so I'm I'm visualizing like the shield that I take 
is this beautiful big gold shield of the tree of life and it just it it radiates from me so which is new it's something that I've been I've been upgraded a, a little bit since then but yeah it was just I just had to be compelled to tell you about my wow. spiky white guys wow thank you for sharing this yeah they, they they just wanted to scare you and to to stop you by fear but it didn't work of course and, no um, no and when you don't fear they can do nothing they can be the the worst of the nastiest if you don't fear they can't reach at you or to you yes. except if they they meet you on the same physical plane then you're doomed <laughs> if you yeah. don't, can't, can't run fast you're doomed but when they attack in a spirit form it's easier to counteract yeah. them yeah yeah thank, thank you. you thank you tammy thank you elena for that yeah that's something that steven talked about how fast they were uh, and oh, when yeah. they move and uh, yeah. no way with his talks about his interactions with them. So yeah, they're definitely nasty and very, very fear-based, um, but uh, they cannot uh, penetrate us uh, with, ho with holding the light and the love that we have uh, and all that wonderful, wonderful shielding protection. Thank you so much, uh, Tammy. Um, all right. We do have a question before we just get to Louise from Patricia in the chat. Um, she didn't want to take up any time uh, with the space, but she did want to ask a question. How may we assist the benevolent beings that stand to your left? To our left. Apparent, maybe they're picking up on some beings that are to your left at this moment. Okay, I have always plenty of people around me. <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, well, the, the, the way we can uh, help these beings, well, um, there are people we can help. It's the Galactic Federation of Worlds. Uh, they're doing a tremendous work. The Council of Five also. Um, the only way the best way, it's not the only way, but the best way to help them do their job is to raise our frequency. We really work hard on that because that will help them, that is helping them tremendously because their job is to get us rid of the parasites on earth and uh, to break down this matrix of mind control. But if we by ourselves already break this break from break free from this matrix individually it helps <laughs> it helps them the more people awakens and raise their frequency and uh, it's it's helping them that that's that's the thing and stop consenting to be influenced by fear and confusion and just center in ourselves and just ascending consciousness and uh, raise reach higher vibrations um that's the best way to help them and also spread the truth that we know we always learn some little bit of truth here and there and just spread it and that will help them yeah. excellent thank you uh for that question and thank you Elena, very much for that answer uh it seems too easy or it seems like we we want more right and we want to have some more definitive answers or we want something more tangible that we can kind of hold on to and and really sink our teeth into uh but when it comes to self-reflection and self-work yeah. and all that kind of stuff it makes it a little tricky uh because we wanted to maybe have something out here um but really again the answer always comes back to here to change within us to raise that vibration within us in order to change uh the world around us uh to raise our environment's uh vibration and together we're just helping it all kind of do it um but being stuck in that fear state being stuck in the shame the guilt and all these kinds of dense feelings and dense programs um it, it, we will get there. It's just going to take a little extra time as we work through it. But again, we can find uh, resolve and some stillness in the fact that we are all on a journey that we need to be on and we're all going to heal 
in the time and in the fashion that we need to heal. Uh, but yeah, we always want extra answers and hopefully maybe there's something else that we can grab onto, but really it comes back to us and uh, humans have a hard time taking that kind of responsibility, uh, but we are <laughs> learning and we're getting a lot better at it. I think we're all seeing um, the consequences, the positive consequences of that right now. Um, thank you so much. Louise, uh, you have your hand up. Hi, Helena. Hi. So nice to see you again. <laughs> nice uh, to see you. My question actually is about Valtor. Yeah. Uh, is it a guy who came in in 1954 as Valiant Tor? Um, he came, in fact, 1957, that he said to me. Um, he was called Valiant Thor, but it's not, Valiant is not his name, it's an interpretation. Okay. Uh, because he said to me, Valiant means uh, brave and a bit romanticized. Um, but his name, his real name is Val, Val Thor. Um, he, so he came actually, in, that's yeah. the guy who was in the Pentagon. Yes, yes, oh, that's, that's it. the same guy. Oh, wow, it's a beautiful yeah. man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, I heard, he's, he's I a heard tal, him yeah. yeah, he's a tal uh, from um, Venus, but it's a uh, Venus colony of tal, but um, they are from the Lyran systems, yeah, yeah, because I have a photo, they've been three a girl and another. Yes, so he's not, um, he said, he's not the, the, the person, the, um, the first, um, the first, he's the, on the bench with the girl. Okay, okay. Yeah. I kept that photo since years. It's, yeah, yeah it's nice to see it's him. Um, I have another question, actually. You talking about the next book. Yeah. Is that something you're going to continue from that one, or is it more detailed as this book you have actually? There won't be new uh, extraterrestrial races described because uh, that that's it. Thoron didn't give me more. It said that's that's what you need to know. Um, it's more useful information about the Galactic Federation, the work they do. Um, yeah. And my throughout my encounters and travels uh, since um, I tell the story of everything I've seen, uh, everything I've been told, uh, the place where I've been, um, and uh, that's very informative. And um, so that's what it is about. That will be nice to read. <laughs> Compliments of information. I have a question. The next question is actually, I'm not quite sure if you can answer that, but I'll try. It's, try. About, it's about these kind of injection who has nano. So mm -hmm. probably Valtor is a, knows about this. The people who get the injection actually are some, let's say what I heard or read, uh, some will have some nano in it. So it's connected to a hay high. If it's connected yeah. to a hay high, that means they can follow people with that. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, alien technology. So like that. when when you are abducted, they put an implant in you. That's the same technology. And but what happened? Uh, yeah, what happened if um, actually, let's say, your friend will live with you or your partner or whatever. One of them has the injection. The other one doesn't have it. Is that only? The effect is it only about lowering your vibration when you are with that person, or something else can be target you. Well, when you have this, uh, Thoran calls it the tracker dust. Yeah, I think it's a fantastic name for it, the tracker dust. Uh, it fixes uh, throughout your bloodstream. I don't know how this works. Uh, it fixes onto your nervous system. Okay. I don't know how, <laughs> God, that's all. Um, I don't know how, anyway. Um, and then um, when uh, they need then uh, to activate, as it's done by satellite and also devices on earth, uh, to activate uh, remote control and they can remote control you. That's one. Second, um, 
it alters your DNA in a lower frequency and you're locked and you're doomed um, in this body. And it does that. Um, yeah, and you cannot ascend and you, you became, and then you're ready for the next step is to become, a, you know, I don't know if you're okay. um, a zombie or, you know, a, a Borg. Or <laughs> yeah, some kind but, of. Uh, actually, <laughs> does it interfere with the other people around you? I'm not sure. No, I'm not sure because it would need to leave the body to. Uh, I'm not sure. If it's in the I'm blood, sure. it goes in the person's fluid. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think so it could well, be like AIDS. Yeah. Uh, like, I mean, that would be nice if know. you can ask to Valtor yeah. eventually. I won't ask Val Thor about that, but I can ask uh, Thorhan about that when he'll, uh, my. Uh, mm -hmm my protector upstairs okay he, that um, would be nice i think people will mm -hmm. will really like to to know that mm -hmm. thank you yeah. very much and right. by the <laughs> way the last time i saw steven chua uh yeah. he was yeah he was on one of my zoom and i don't know in that time what happened he was probably in contact with you but that night he looked like 20 years younger oh really yeah. When I saw his face, I said, my goodness, what happened to him? He looked very, he looked really 20 years younger. So, yeah, something happened before he left anyway. I think he was released. Wow. Yeah. So that's wow. my best, let's say, souvenir I got from him. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Thank you, Louise. That's impressive. You're welcome. Thank you for sharing. Uh, and thank you, Elena, for that as well. Um, all right, moving right along, we're going to say hello to Kelly. Hello, Kelly. There we go. You can hear me now? Absolutely. Okay. Hi, Kelly. Hi there. Um, my question is, I've uh, done some reading on the blue avions, and I'm just wondering if you have any information on them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, um, what we call the blue avians, uh, their name is Karei or Karai. Uh, they come from oh, Car Carians, if we want to uh, earth size it. <laughs> Karai, they come from Orion, from I think it's Betelgeuse. I don't think, uh, I think I may be wrong. Um, uh, yes, they are um, a colony of Laan, uh, feline beings. It's very weird. But that's how I've been told. Um, who fled the the man system in the Lyra constellation when there was the war and stuff? They found this uh, planetary system. Um, uh, I think I need to tell you where it is. Um, but yeah, I couldn't find them in the book. So oh, see, and maybe I was I just wasn't looking. That's them. Um, Two to nine. Uh, they come from, um, well, they are Betelgeuse. Oh, I'm so good. My memory is amazing um, sometimes. Uh, so they are, um, these Laan La La feline beings um, bred themselves because they were so good. They are so good in genetics. They are super good. Uh, they bred themselves with a species that their descendants could be able to to live on the planet regarding to the conditions of gravity, pressure, air, chemical, you know, uh, air composition, things like that, and eat the food and etc. So they bred, the, the easiest they could do is to, they found was to breed with a, a local species of bluebirds, big bluebirds, and that gave this hybrid race. That's what I've been explained. Um, okay. The Karai. Thank you. Yes. And welcome. Amazing. Uh, thank you, Kelly, for that fascinating question. Um, that sparking questions in my mind about some wonderful things, but we have some hands up that we want to get to very, very quickly though, before I lose it, uh, Cindy, uh, just quickly asked, have you been in contact with the, the council of nine? Well, the only council of nine that I can think of is the count, the actual council of five, who was nine until recently. Uh, 
So yes, of course, uh, I am very close to someone who is uh, in that in the council of the Council of Five. Uh, um, there are also nine uh, elders in the Andromedan Council. The Andromedan Council has 140 races, uh, cultures, high level of cultures, but there, there is a council of nine elders uh, in that. So uh, I haven't been in contact with the Andromedan Council at all. I've seen some Zinai, uh, but um, on board Thoron's um, station. But I never interact with them. I'm too impressed. <laughs> they are so magnificent. Um, so yeah, it depends. So if it is the Council of Nine from Orion, the, the Council of Five now, uh, yes, I'm uh, closely um, uh, closely related to uh, contact with this one. Amazing. Thank you so much. Um, okay. Next up, uh, Catherine has a fun one, I believe. Catherine, what do you got? Actually, Monica has had her hand up and she hasn't asked a question yet. So I'd like Monica to go before me, please. Uh, that's very, very thoughtful of you. Monica, please. Thank you. Uh, just wondering if you know this or any direction of this for those friends, family, anyone we know that has been chosen to take the injection, is there hope? Can they do, uh, if they're willing to do the work, frequencies, releasing of the toxins, breathing to help change the DNA to allow the soul to come back in? I understand the soul gets released and is tethered outside the body, perhaps. Well, the soul is not really released, otherwise people, the person will die, but um, uh, it's slightly disconnected. Um, I think rising the frequency, detoxifying, but uh, the body will be forever uh, altered, uh, DNA altered. So they can do their best to rise their frequency and have a very healthy life, uh, detoxify, and they, they'll be all right. They'll be all right. But um, they'll be all right. They'll be all right. Um, the soul, the soul hasn't gone. It's always still attached. You know, if the soul go, go soul leaves the body, that's that's the end of it. But uh, so, but th th they'll be fine. And um, you know, all these control devices haven't been activated yet, and I'm not ready to be activated because they are being destroyed. Uh, the you know that obviously I don't think it's going to happen. So, but the damage of the, the the alteration in, in the body it's um it's concerning but uh, yeah detoxify have a healthy life good mood good thoughts good frequency good vibration and uh that helps that helps to to be all right to be all right yeah i suppose yeah yeah thank, thank you, you. Thank you, Monica, for that uh, for that question. Thank you, Alina, for that answer. Uh, there is always hope. I, I mentioned yes. in the chat to Monica that I will I will not accept absolute doom. Uh, so there is there is always the possibility of of healing. So as long as we're breathing, we're going to be healing. Uh, absolutely. Yes. Thank you so much for that. Okay, Catherine, hang on tight. We have Todd uh, next up. Hi there. Um, this might be a real quick question, but we, um, our family visited the Blue Room in Calgary here a little while ago. We've, we've done a few visits. We've had really good experiences, but my 12-year-old daughter uh, had an image that was in her head and she jotted it down. And sorry, let me. I don't see. Yeah, because you have a, a screen behind. Put yeah, it in front of your t-shirt like this. <laughs> yeah, yes small. that's the only way i can see it and but now it's too small oh, in front of your head uh, you, if you yeah. remove your background I, picture yeah. then yeah. it will be better i can't see it let's try this go closer 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 okay what's that <laughs> can you lift it a bit yes yeah, yeah. It's like a flower that loses its petals. Yeah, uh, just to me, it almost looked like it had a, a, a crystal type of shape to it as well. 
like almost uh, geometric sort of thing. Oh yeah, could be crystals, yeah. Oh, like a crystal cluster yeah. from above. Oh, so yeah, could be that. But what are the little spikes? I don't know what's that. Yeah, it's just, it seemed to be uh, yeah. very ingrained in her head. So she had to write it down. And so just curious if it rang a bell with anybody, but. You know what I see? Um, it's just an insight that comes to me looking at this. Uh, it, it's like the flower of life that loses its petals. And it's like um, um, telling about a danger that this person should take care of its, her energy levels and um, change the, her, I don't know, diet or um, way of living to, to recover health. It's like if she's losing energy, she's losing health. It's like a message. I would interpret it like that. Okay. What do you think? Does that resonate with you? Yeah, no, I, I think so. Um, yeah, and I see one comment, flowers opening and a crystalline opening. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's, I don't know, it, maybe it means some sort of change or something that's upcoming. Yeah, yeah change, absolutely. Um, yeah, change, it, total, total change, yeah. Yeah, and she needs to... Um, to readapt her way of living, to readapt to that. Okay, well, thank you very much. Th that's just my insight. <laughs> yep, no, that helps. Thank you. Good, 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 good. E excellent, uh, <laughs> fascinating question. Uh, I love it. Thank you so much, Todd, for sharing that. Uh, and thank mm. you, Elena, for that as well. Um, before moving on, we just have a quick question here uh, from Len, he is very, very curious if, um, if Alena, you are familiar with the Federation of Light as channeled by Blossom Goodchild. Okay, I, I heard this name, but I don't know this person. Um, I, I don't have time to watch videos. Uh, um, the Federation of Light, uh, it's an interpretation of the name the Gal of the Galactic Federation of Worlds. In fact, the Galactic Federation of Worlds, they never present themselves as of worlds. It's, it's logical for them. So they say, oh, we are the Galactic Federation. So spiritual people say, oh, they are good, they are allies, so they work for the light. So they are the Galactic Federation of light, opposed to the dark ones. But they never call themselves like this. So, um, so the, the, the name is an interpretation of Earth. Why would I always, Thorhan told, taught me to always be cautious of everything called off light. That's earthling interpretation of something um, from elsewhere and benevolent. So um, I think this person uh, channels or has messages or communicates, I don't know, with um, the Galactic Federation. Um, and uh, maybe because it's the only federation that uh, is is here around in the solar system so me, i'm i'm convinced that well not convinced but not my the lo logic would say that uh, she's in contact with them um that that would make sense thank you i don't uh, know her so i don't know that's all right thank you uh Lynn, for the question and thank you Elena, for the uh for that answer um one more second, Kat. We're going to just let Deb jump in here and say hello. Hi, Deb. Hi, Phil. <laughs> Hi, Elena. Hello. Lovely to see you again. <laughs> Lovely um, to see you. So I, I guess it was about a week and a half ago, I started to get a really strong feeling of um, earth changes coming. Mm. And since then, I've started seeing... Um, other messages about the same thing and so i wanted to ask you if thorhan or your any of your other friends have given you any insight about um coming earth changes a week ago haha you should watch a video on my channel a week ago <laughs> um yes there has been a big change i i woke up this morning by a sort of energy of emotional energy from Thorhan, which was 
like an explosion of joy and victory. I said, what happened? And he said, we've, we, something um, great, we, uh, some operations that we were conducing on earth have been achieved successfully. Uh, so it was um, operations of clearing undergrounds, but a big, 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 uh, web of undergrounds and he showed me afterwards it was under the ocean Indian Ocean um, and uh, a lot of uh, reptilian beings have been evacuated and because a lot of reptilian beings have been evacuated off planet of earth the energies changed brutally because when the, sh the, the ships left um, because these these reptilian beings carry also very um, dark um, etheric entities with them and everything left with, with them and the Schumann resonance I remember this day when like off the roof like <laughs> there was a <laughs> like this it was, it was that day and I didn't know about that uh, it, it happened it suddenly you need, needs to rebalance you know wow um, uh, that happened and since it's a little bit better the, we can breathe a little bit better it's not over they, they keep on cleansing but um, it, it's more uh, the earth grid is a little bit higher in frequency now uh, so that helps a lot of people can feel it uh, they have more um, ability and it's easier for people to just have connect uh, spiritually or you know with everything um, so okay yeah. that's very interesting because that's the last one of yours that I watched I did oh. watch that one um I don't catch all of them but you know I catch them that's here too much there. I, I know <laughs> I I did see that one and it's very interesting that you said that because um um after I had that feeling and it was about the water and, um, and, and it was like, I was processing all this energy, um, mm. like purifying the water in my own body, um, because, because of all the trauma that was held in the memory of the water on the planet and, and it happened, it yeah. might've been connected to the same event. Yeah. Because it happened under the ocean and the, the Indian ocean, this whole part, it was, uh, the, so the water um just wow okay yeah. thank you thank you wow thank you uh deb for that fascinating question thank you alana for that uh wonderful uh validation uh and reassurance as well um, i'm sure we all have felt some some wonky wonky things and it's super interesting that it you know i guess it's not it's not a surprise but it's just really interesting to kind of process you know the the leaving of that dark negative energy has that it gave us a little bit of a of a jolt of like Ugh, weirdness <laughs> and you know we're all and then we're all kind of managing that in our own kind of way in the way we can you know regular emotions regular feelings all that kind of stuff and mm -hmm. some of us are able to kind of pinpoint it some of us can and we're like well man it's been a little bit of a crazy week absolutely uh but to get some of that um to get some of that insight is is super fascinating and we're definitely all cheering uh for uh the light workers that are uh working so super super hard um to liberate uh those locations so thank you so much uh for that update um you're gonna have to keep holding their cat as, as more people uh are coming on uh, i think there is some questions in the chat but very very quickly uh linda uh you've uh, stepped up so hello Actually, I was I was really curious uh, what Kat was going to say. If it, you said it was a funny question, a fun question. It, it is fun because it goes into a little history. Uh, but I don't I don't know if, if Kat, if you want to. If, if you want to go it. first and then I'll go because I'm very curious as your question. Then I'll go right after you if that's OK. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Elena, my question is actually about your work in Egyptian archaeology. Um, oh, lovely. Very <laughs> <The> changes. <laughs> Yes, very fascinated and connected with Egypt, Egypt, as I'm sure many that are here are as well. Um, 
and I was trying to narrow down, what do I want to ask? But I think I'll just leave it to the pyramids. Um, the pyramids, uh, I've always seen in, in, I guess, my memories that they were built with love, not with slaves, and they were built to be more than tombs. So what I was wondering with, based on the work that you have done, uh, have you seen evidence in the pyramids that they are either a transportation device? Some people have said that they were for uh, sound. I know that they are linked to other sacred sites on the earth, but they're offline and many of them are under the control of the negative alien alliance. So um, should, I guess, should we have these sacred sites be brought back online? And uh, as I said, do you have seen anything uh, in your work to suggest that the pyramids uh, are more than what we are being led to believe? Not in my work, in fact, um, but uh, because there is there are no evidences. But when we step out of archaeology and see the bigger picture, um, we look at astronomy, we look at the, um, the history uh, told by aliens, <laughs> not by us, by our structures. Yes, these pyram pyramids are way more ancient. They were generators and um, probably transportation devices. They are set um, on pointing on certain stars. And when you, and that, well, archaeology, yes, that tells something. It's that um, they are, um, when you see, look at the map of Egypt, you can superimpose the map of the sky with the pyramids and the Nile as the Milky Way uh, in the sky, in the night sky. Uh, and so the three pyramids of Giza are the three stars uh, of um, the Orient Belt. Very interestingly, uh, so in the Orion Belt, uh, there are two stars um, who are, uh, I think it's um, Alnitak and Mintaka, who are uh, uh, inhabited by malevolent uh, gray species. And uh, Alnilam is actually in the center is actually, uh, I think it's the center one, populated by the Egaroth, who are an extremely benevolent and wise and ancient race of ETs. They look like greys, but not really. Uh, they, they have brown skin. Um, they look human with large head. The Egaroth have been involved uh, in the Egyptian history, and they are part of the Council of now five, uh, former nine. Um, my one of my protectors, and I'm very linked with him, Anaxis and Egaroth, so I know a bit of the Egaroths. Um, yeah, the so the the, the pyramids. Um, I've been shown pyramidal devices to produce energy from the void, from the, the energy from the void, the frill, uh, that could have been used for that, more mainly for portals. Um, what else? There's a text um, in the pyramid, there one of the pyramids um, who has, not the, the, the Giza ones, but it's in um, um, Oh, another place in the desert somewhere. <laughs> um, oh, that's annoying when you don't remember the name. This is all right. There's there are text engraved in a, in a pyramid, and um, inside it's in the Saqqara Desert. And this text tells about the st story. It says that um, a text of the pyramids. You can find that online. It tells that uh, the god Ra was feeling very old and wanted to go back home in Orion. So he delegated, he, he had to delegate his power to one of his sons or maybe generals or crews, I don't know. Um, so that's the whole story of Osiris and Seth and stuff. But it's written, the god Ra was feeling 
old and tired and he wanted to go back home in Orion. And that is brilliant. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's what I know about the pyramids. So it, it's so way much older than we've been told. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Catherine, and thank you, Al Alana, for that. Uh, of course, you had to ask a question that I could just stay on here for another couple hours and ask questions and talk about what a wonderful topic, because it can go so deep. And uh, mm. Michelle quickly wants, to, and tying on to that, because I think it's kind of tied to all of it, um, Michelle is very curious, what about Antarctica, Alana? Uh, are there <laughs> are there are there ETs under there? Is it is it a part yeah. of the the um, the breakaway civilization that we saw formed during World War II? Um, yeah. Are they still there? What yeah. where what where does the SSP come into play in regards to Antarctica? That you know again, this is a a topic we can keep going on uh there's a lot of stuff here that we can unpack but maybe very quickly give us give us the cole's notes of what you know about antarctica right now okay um it's um it's it's re led by reptilian sicar from alpha draconis that's the main civilization they work with um humanoids from um the aldebaran system humanoids from the Altair system and from the, the Pleiades, the Alcyone, uh, Tal, who are renegades and not good. Um, they have welcomed uh, the Nazis there in Antarctica. Um, they have trained them, uh, helped them technologically, build their empire and do all their atrocities. They have been working together. Um, uh, and they, yeah, they are they are still there and it's a war at the moment going on there in Antarctica with the Federation. Well, the Alliance, more specifically, the Alliance, which is the union from um, ET military forces from the Federation and uh, military forces from Earth to fight back the, the Cabal and the reptilians and everything. So this, the Alliance on Earth, uh, they are in Antarctica fighting and it's quite uh, horrible. Uh, Antarctica has been isolated um, by underground by the tunnels uh, from all the rest. They've, they've done that, which is great work. Um, so that's it. Um, populated and owned by reptilians, um, Altairan people um, and uh, Nazis. Yeah. Uh, yeah, again, we could just I, but there's then, just so yeah, much there for sure that you it, can it's just... it's a it's a turn, turning point ground for slave trade for galactic slave trade it's an astral port there's a portal to jump on mars and somewhere else uh it's based of one of the base of the dark fleet there's so much to say yeah yeah ab no absolutely uh fascinating <laughs> fascinating topic yeah. uh something that we could just to spend the whole two hours just talking about Antarctica and uh, go ahead, Elena, please. Sorry, uh, for all those who are um, interested in Antarctica, because now I, I, I'm working a lot with uh, Michael Sala at the moment, and uh, he's going to do a webinar of four hours in May uh, talking about Antarctica. <laughs> Love it. So go on his web website, Exopolitics, and uh, check this out. That's going to be awesome. That sounds pretty awesome. Uh, yeah, yeah, exopolitics. You just <laughs> if you think Earth politics are interesting, uh, you haven't seen oh anything my God. yet. Oh my God! <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Okay, um, we are nearing the mark. I know we wanted to do uh, something special at the end here, but we have Linda. Uh, it's that fine. Wanted to, it's fine. That wanted to know what Catherine's question, but Linda, you have your own question. What's on your mind? Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm going to try and be as quick as I can. Hi, Elena. It's so nice to meet you. Um, just everything is going on here. I'm just so fascinated with. I'm just going to give you a tiny background on, on you know, what I, I've experienced. Uh, I had a near-death experience in uh, April of 2009. And, you know, throughout my whole life, I've experienced 
skeletons. I don't know who they are okay. and why why they keep coming into my life, but uh, it turns out that it's um, it's it's um, it started with my great grandmother and then my grandmother, my mother, myself, my daughter, my granddaughter, and so we've all had the okay. same very similar dream, and we've all you stood up and said, you know, we're not gonna we just don't want you around. So we stood up to them and pushed them away. So in, in April of 2006, I had a near death experience where one of these beings was physically in my living room and touched me and tried to take me away. And, and I can, I can, it's still very visceral. And, and when I talk about it, my face goes flush because it's, it was, it was a hundred percent physical in my living room. Anyway, I stood up to it and told them, no, we're not doing this. Um, I'm not going with you. And I haven't seen it mm, since, wow. except for in, in meditation once in a while, I'll see it as part of my soul group. Um, and then along comes my granddaughter. She's going to be 10 the end of May. And since she's been uh, tight, like, oh, gosh, maybe 15, 16 months old, she has had this little dragon that goes with her wherever she goes. Her name is Hallie. She's Hallie has taken her off planet, taken her to her home and, and, and they're friends. And, you know, I've seen this, this off planet. Um, it, it looks like a dragon. It's very purple. I've been to their planet. My, my granddaughter's been to their planet. And then my granddaughter and my mother, they've never actually met. Um, my mother tells the exact same story that my granddaughter tells. And I just, I'm so curious. Um, the, the, the people on the planet that we go to are very humanitarian. And so if you can imagine a six-year-old telling this, this particular story of going mm -hmm. to her friend's home uh, on a different planet, I asked her, I said, well, what do her, what did you meet her parents? Yes. And yeah. what her parents do is they go around the galaxy. So this is, keep in mind, this is a six-year-old telling me, they go around the galaxy and they find all the lost aliens and they take them home and they feed them and they make sure that they're okay. And then they find their home and then they take them home and make sure that they're okay. And so they're basically, they're social workers of the galaxy. <laughs> that's That's the mm. only thing I can come up with. Have you ever heard tell of anything like that before? Uh, you know, it's and and they yeah. they look they look like just your typical Disney dragon, I guess you could say. That's the only thing I can come up with. That is weird because dragon it's not good in my records. Um but it but it may not be a dragon, it could be something because uh, um how it started was I took her to the park and we saw a dragon fly. And it came over, it flew right in front of us and, and was hovering and she laughed and she tried to, you know, give it a flower and everything. But, but these, these particular beings are extremely friendly. They're extremely kind, uh, very human, like humanitarian, I guess that's the only word I can come up with, but they're, they're basically, they, they're trying to, to uh, spread well-being throughout the galaxy if that makes any sense yeah. and you've not heard anything like that no, before no no there uh, you know yeah there's it's there's so much diversity uh, in this universe so um they're beautiful it's probably a species I, I i i haven't been thought of you know okay darn i was I don't know if you had a bit of no. an answer for me because I've been so curious. Who are these people? And this is where I'm from, is from this. And you know, when I when I start telling people about it, they're like, oh, you have a demon. Well, no, it's not a demon. Oh, this is no. just where I'm from. Uh, mm. this is my home. And we're very kind and and we just want everybody to be healthy and happy and living in their own home and if you're lost hey you know what you come and i'll feed you and i'll make sure you have a good bed and <laughs> once you get settled we'll we'll go and we'll find your home for you that's that's where that's where we've come from and i was just hoping that somebody else heard more about this i'm 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 very sorry i i i don't know i haven't been told about this race but sometimes i i um, i advise to um next time you connect with them ask to sh 
you you want to know where they are in this galaxy. So yes. ask them to to show you the constellation. So it it they they're going to either draw on a paper or put you the little dots in front of your your eyes in your mind to show you the, the pattern of the constellation. And then as soon as you can draw them on paper and they can emphasize on the on the star system in the constellation. Mm -hmm. And then you take a map of the sky and you try to identify it. And then okay. you have the name of the star. And then already you have an anchor you can work on. Okay. I know that I have seen their ship. My granddaughter has seen their ship. My mother has seen their ship. Wow. She's been on the ship. Um, wow. I don't I don't know that I've been. I think I've been, you know, astral projected or whatever. But uh, I've seen the ship and it's like four, um, five or six lights in a string. So it's like a tic-tac shape, only it's just like lights. Mm. They're not flashing. They just come along very wow. slowly. And yeah, okay. And they're uh -oh. reptilians, so yeah. I don't know. Those, that's, that's a reptilian ship? No, I, you, you say they look like dragons. Uh, yes, but... Um, they're they're very joyous they're full of they're just happy yeah. happy they're not mean and yeah. um but yeah you know. but i mean yeah but they're repti they're, they are reptilian species yes yeah, yeah. but know. not mean and and warmongering yeah, and yeah, yeah. they're not like that yeah. and i just i don't know and they have wings uh, the, yes, they do. I, I think, yeah. So my granddaughter has told me that her, her little friend has, has wings. Just tiny, like tiny little wings. Ones, they're yeah. not, yeah, they're okay. not, um, but, um, yeah, they yeah. come to her in a dream and, and they're just very, very friendly, very okay. loving. I don't know. I just thought I'd throw it out there and hopefully, hopefully sorry, somebody sorry, can. I can't, sorry, no, I can't help you. It. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. I know it's pretty far out. So thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, uh, Linda. Thank and thank you, you Elena, for that. Uh, there is, uh, Linda, there are some comments in the chat. Um, if you want to check those out. Um, I know Kat was uh, saying some supportive things in there and some, some others. So uh, definitely check it out. Uh, and then, uh, but, but I think at the end of the day, again, listen to our heart and into our intuition of uh, what we really, what really resonates with us with, with any kind of situation, um, whether it's that or uh, a worldly situation as well. Um, all right. So we, um, yes, everyone, please, uh, a little bit of a reminder, save the chat. Um, as there are uh, lots of links in there, you can save the chat by uh, clicking on the three dots at the right side of the chat window. Um, it says more, and then you can go to save chat. Um, to wrap up tonight, we uh, we have something uh, very, very uh, special. Um, Elena or Alana, maybe you could explain uh, to everyone um, what you're going to be uh, playing tonight. And before you play, I do have something I would like to read, um, to set us up for that. So please, uh, tell us, tell us what we're going to be doing and, um, and what, what, what that really means for you. It's closing a circle and, um, okay. This is about St Stephen Chow. I first met him here in this chat few months ago and uh, it's it's like a closure it's not only for me it's for you as well and for him um, S Stephen um, was as you know doing a lot of meditation and um, he knew about uh, singing bowls and I I do sound healing and uh, I, I use singing bowls but crystal ones and he's, he told me he said it in the video as well for every, everyone, the video of our interview, but we had had a chat and he was saying to me, I really advise you um, seven metal uh, Tibetan bowl uh, on the note of, note of G. And this helps you rising your frequency a lot. 
and it protects you and it rises your frequency. G, it's uh, the, the throat chakra. And it's seven metal ball. So um, I, um, he sent me, he, he, he looked it for me, sent me a link and uh, I, I on eBay found that that's the one you need to have. And I bought this one and I received it after he passed. So to me, this ball, it's here. It's uh, like his post-mortem gift, even if I paid for it. It's, to me, it means a lot. Um, when I, I ring it, it's, um, so here we go. Handmade in Nepal. Uh, advice, everyone. I found it on eBay. Uh, he sent me this link. Uh, so seven metal, it corresponds to the seven chakras and not note G. Um, ringing this ball is connecting with Stephen. And I, I was saying that uh, to Philip that I, or maybe I, uh, I ring it and we connect with Stephen's spirit. Oh, and uh, to say whatever we want to say to him and let him in, letting him go. So I'm going to um, to do this. Uh, you want Philip to read something before? Yeah, I just want to read a quick um, sovereign uh, prayer and message that Stephen sent to me. Um, I think probably days um, before uh, he left us to go on to onto his uh, next journey. Um, so I, I'm just going to read this. And then, and then you can, um, then you can share that with us. Um, Alana, thank you. I sovereign free human and spiritual being standing as equal among the members of the galactic community request of my own free will on behalf of the people of Terra assistance to the galactic federation of worlds to expel malevolent and invasive extraterrestrial forces out of this world, definitely. To end their occupation and liberate the people of Terra from slavery. That any previous agreement made with malevolent extraterrestrial forces in the past be rescinded. For by their own free will, the people of Terra are reclaiming back now their own planet. The people of Terra are reclaiming their rights and their sovereignty. The people of Terra make now agreement with the Galactic Federation of Worlds. May this be set in the infamy of the stars and the eternity of time. May peace and justice always prevail. So be it.
Thank you, Stephen. We want to say thank you for all you've given to all of us individually here, but also to all humans of this planet. You gave them a gift, the gift of your life, the gift, gift of truth. We are all honored to have held you in our arms, in our hearts, and to have lifted you towards the sky where you belong. You are now with Quenin and your family. On behalf of all of us, thank you. Thank you, Alana. Thank you, Stephen. And thank you, everyone. Uh, so powerful. Uh, that was, um, that shook me right to the bone as soon as you rang that out, Alana. And I know everyone else did too. <gasps> yeah, <laughs> thank you. Um, <laughs> don't know what to say now. <laughs> it's just you don't have to say anything. You don't have to say anything anymore right now. Um, thank you, everyone, uh, for taking the time to meet with us tonight. Thank you to Alana for your power and your light and your love um, and your grace um, and your compassion. Thank you uh, to the coordinators uh, for your continued service and your time and energy uh, within CC Canada. Um, and thank you. Stephen, uh, for everything that you have given us, uh, and we honor you and we remember you. Uh, thank you so, so much. Um, thank you everyone for taking the time tonight. And thank you again to our special guest, Alana. Um, very, very special to have you tonight with us. And hopefully we can do this again and hopefully not wait six months. Uh, we would love to have no. you back. <laughs> Yeah, that, that'd be nice. Yes, that'd be nice. Excellent. Excellent. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, everyone, uh, we will be uh, putting this on our, on our website. And so you can check this out in the next uh, few days. Just please give some grace as we uh, work that out. Um, and then I can send a copy to you, Alana, as well if, uh, for, for you and uh, in your uh, for your half there. Um, Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful to connect and share with all of you this evening. We will be back tomorrow afternoon for our meditation group with uh, David Kiara from Above Duality. Look, really looking forward to that. Uh, so I'll see you all there um, if you would like. And then if not, we will see you almost every night next week. I think we have something going on. So please, please, please check out the website and check up all the upcoming dates and you can join. And then we will be posting our next chat with uh, Alana very, very soon, I am sure. Uh, thank you uh, again uh, to our special guests. Thank you, coordinators. Thank you, new members, older members, everyone in between. Uh, we really cannot do this alone. Uh, together, we will really push through this darkness and really uh, bring in the new earth that we are all, all wanting to manifest so, so badly. Uh, just keep raising that vibration by being kind to yourself and being kind to others. Uh, work in that heart center day in and day out. I know it's difficult, but just lean on as many, many like-minded friends as possible. Come out to our Zooms, come out to our gatherings, uh, get to know some people uh, and raise the vibration with us. I love you all so very, very, very much. We will see you next time. Bye, everyone. Bye. Good night. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Take care. Bye.
Thank you. Bye bye, everyone. Bye. Merci, Elena. Merci.